No doubt about it, gold's recent price performance against fiat has been disappointing. Today we explore what may lie ahead, so let's dive on in. Now this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy, so please do consider subscribing. I'm telling almost any market analyst that within the space of a year the world's key central banks would uh, double the size of their balance sheets while governments would send their already colossal debt soaring. Uh, they would have told you uh, that gold is likely to have done very well. But instead, its performance, despite a couple of key swings up and down, has been uh, largely range-bound between $1,700 and $1,900. Meanwhile, the gold-silver ratio, where lower levels reflect the precious metals bull market, threatened to break out below uh, the 68 to 1 ratio. Yet in recent weeks, we've seen this trend uh, reverse and move negative and break up above the 30-week uh, moving average, as we can see here. This is not an encouraging sign on the face of things. Additionally, the traditional sign that gold watchers look out for has been the real yield. But if we compare here the gold price in yellow on the left hand side and the iShares uh, TIPS bond ETF in blue on the right hand side, uh, which generally move together as we can see here, they have diverged noticeably in recent weeks. Now, TIPS are government bonds whose, f whose face value uh, rises with inflation. So what's going on here? Well, firstly, we must distinguish between physical gold and paper gold. The demand for physical gold uh, and silver has been extraordinarily high, as we all know. Then there's the outright manipulation a uh, few finer examples have been evident than just last week when we saw an epic flash crash in gold. But there have certainly been others such as uh, last autumn and in the midst of the silver squeeze of course. And it's little wonder when the metals act as the canary in the coal mine uh, to currency debasement that authorities want to keep these prices under control. And so now gold is fighting against both the manipulators and the economic recovery na narrative. Now this recovery narrative is based upon the perspective of ongoing Fed liquidity continuing to boost risk assets upwards. But it's complemented by fiscal stimulus which is said to be driving up demand and has consequently given rise to labour market shortages complementing additional uh, cost push inflationary pressures from the supply side constraints that we've seen in recent weeks. Those adhering to this perspective believe that such shortages are set to see real wages rise dramatically. And thus we have the death now for gold, a potential rise in rates sending the dollar higher. Indeed, whenever I hear the prospect of uh, real wages rising, I'm always reminded of Russell Napier's definition of central bankers, those that permit for inflation in everything but real wages. And I think this is a key uh, definition to understand in terms of understanding central bank policy. And to that end, the reality seems starkly different where concerns are growing regarding the dramatic decline in consumer confidence that we, have, uh, that we can see in this chart. Whether it's homes, vehicles or large household durables, we are in a marked decline downwards, which must gravely concern our central planners. At the same time, the Fed believes at the same time, the Fed believes the Keynesian fiscal multiplier remains at 1.5. Now, this simply means that for every $100 injected into the economy by the government, it generates $150 of additional income generating activities. But many debate as to whether this is uh, still even a positive figure at all. Indeed, we all know, and that includes the Fed, that stimulus payments are subject to diminishing marginal returns. Ultimately, it takes more and more stimulus to generate any sort of stimulative impact on the uh, economy. And certainly we know that the recent labour shortages have greatly impacted uh, by the massive distortion of incentives that have taken place as a consequence of widespread uh, intervention by governments in labour markets. 
ultimately it seems all Western governments have gone out of their way to create an unemployment trap where labour uh, is incentivized to actually stay at home. But this bizarrely also extends to the employed where people in the UK have capitalised on the government's contact tracing app to help uh, them get time off work. Horrific Sovietization of all incentives has enabled, uh, has been enabled by the, all of this funny money that's been created. And then there's the prospect of the next stage of the current crisis playing out, as I outlined in both of these videos. This is certainly my central scenario. Yet yeah, I would love to be proven wrong on this, as I've said many times before. So what about the gold chart? Well, as we said, with regard to gold, it has largely been range bound, generally centering around $1,800. And Jim Rickards has keenly pointed out that the greatest sign towards high volatility is low volatility. The question is, which way does the uh, volatility move next? Fed intervention to combat inflation would send the markets and gold down before any flight to safety then took place. Yet, as Rickard said, given the pressures on the dollar from interest rates, inflation expectations, global capital flows, pandemic fears, political dysfunction and slowing growth, there's no reason that a stable dollar price of gold should persist. Now add to this that we may also appear to be in the early stage of financial crisis where reverse repos have just gone wild. This simply comes down to a uh, global shortage of high quality dollar collateral, mostly in the form of short term treasury bills, which has consequently caused a contraction in large bank balance sheets as they don't have good collateral that they can leverage for cash. This could certainly be a potential uh, sign of a new liquidity crisis. Jerome Powell certainly has a lot on his plate. And so what are the insiders, uh, the central banks doing? Well, they're adding Brazil and India most recently, but of course also Palantir Technologies in helping them to prepare for potential black swan events. Thus, in my opinion, gold and silver, real money, remain a key component of any investment portfolio, particularly when you consider ongoing uncertainty, concerns regarding inflation and the levels of debt that we see apparent around us. But you can go much further by considering the rollout of central bank digital currencies, which is of course well underway in China and we will see progressively across the course of this next, next decade in Western countries. So to that end, I still remain long term bullish on gold. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been a useful review and a useful look at in terms of what's happening and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.